Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. So in the continuation to our series on understanding the new features that are coming in Spark 3, uh, which is already available in the uh, public preview. So one of the marquee highlights of Spark 3 is the announcements uh, towards the optimization and the performance of uh, the Spark queries or the Spark SQL queries. So on the same lines, one of uh, the most important features that is coming towards the performance optimization is the concept of dynamic partition pruning. So we are already aware that in the current version of Spark, we have a static partition pruning uh, with the concept of predicate pushdown already available where whatever filter you try to apply on a particular table, uh, that get pushed down before even the table scan uh, happens and this reduces the whole amount of you know data which gets scanned and thus we achieve uh, a good amount of performance that when we'll have to read the minimal amount of data or the only required amount of data but this concept is extended further and uh, what we have as a new feature is dynamic partition pruning or DPP so in this video, we'll try to understand the nitty gritties and details of DPP. So guys, let's start. And before we start, I would like to request to all my viewers, uh, do subscribe to the channel, uh, view, share and comment, and don't press, don't forget to press the bell icon. So guys, let's start. So as you know, uh, in one of the previous videos, we discussed what are the highlighted features released as part of uh, Spark 3 and uh, if we see the entire theme of uh, the major updates in Spark 3 is around optimization of the queries and in on the similar lines uh, one of the major features that we are getting is the concept of dynamic partition pruning so the whole idea here is how we can make sure that the queries only churn the amount of required data and whatever data is not required based on the conditions that should be pruned or that should be ignored and that should not be taken into account for the execution of that particular query and this will help us to achieve the substantial amount of performance optimizations so guys let's quickly understand uh, that in the current versions we do have this concept of static partition pruning for example if from a sum table say sales I try to apply a filter or uh, some filter say a day so the only amount of data that I want to access or that I want Spark to process is for that particular filter. So how Spark optimizes this particular filter is rather than doing this scan on the table, it will push down this filter first so that we only have the required data which is already filtered and then that data is scanned further by the, uh, by the Spark and processed. <coughs> So, for example, if we have, say, number of different partitions, these different colors are representing different partitions. So, based on the filters, only uh, the selected partitions would be sent forward for Spark to process, which would have that data corresponding to that filter. So, this is great. This is available with Spark 2, right? So, but if we look out a particular scenario which is very common in the data warehouse uh, kind of landscape that you, you would always have one fact table or one large table we can say and we have to join it with number of different dimension tables and if we try to write a join say if we try to write a join in such a way that I'm joining it with some fact table which obviously is a large table so my this filter pruning or the predicate push down will only be applied on one side of the join only because this is the column which is available in this particular uh, table a smaller table and the filter condition is applied on that particular column on a smaller table so in that case the predicate push down or the static partition pruning would only happen on this smaller table so then ne there's no way we can kind of replicate it on the bigger table which obviously is the most uh, valid potential candidate that should be filter should be applied on now in this situation what will happen this bigger table would be scanned incomplete and then it will go for the join uh, I know that the data which is going for the join from the bigger table 
obviously doesn't meet that filter condition but in spite of that is going for a join and thus making this entire join operation expensive quite expensive uh, now if we check out the usual mechanism uh, how we write the queries how we write different joins is we kind of join the two tables without even applying any filter and then we try to play on the the data which comes out of the join and apply different filters and uh, different aggregations and conditions now this usual method has a lot of downsides obviously as there is no pruning of data happened before the join in these two scenarios the entire tables are scanned this obviously is quite expensive the duplication of data is happening also the intermediate data from the join would be placed in some sort of an intermediate table that also takes a lot of space and post the join as the filtering has not happened and even the column pruning has not happened it will result in, uh, in into an extensively white table which will take a lot of space and overall will reduce the whole <coughs> optimization factors of that query now if you look into the concept of dynamic partition pruning at, at a high level from the design and approach perspective the idea here is can we bring this filter the, can we bring this filter which is already applied by static uh, pruning on the smaller table can we apply it dynamically on the large side of the join on the bigger fact table if you can do it dynamically that will reduce uh, the amount of data which is which will go further for the join and thus result in the overall optimization of the join so that is the overall idea of dynamic partition pruning now let's see how it is applied in spark 3 so for that let's quickly understand how actually this spark sql query uh, execution happens as we all know it will first analyze the query and prepare a logical plan where the rule based transformations and optimizations would be done uh, rule based optimizations like you know column pruning it will not take into account the columns which are not required for further processing it will do the static partition pruning with the help of predicate push down the filters would be pushed before the scan and then based on that a physical plan would be generated and then on top of that physical planning a lot of you know stat based cost based model will come into the picture and uh, the spark will uh, pick the best or the most effective physical plan and send it further on the different nodes where these different partitions of data are residing uh, that are required for that particular query and then it goes to the cluster and the, and, and the workers uh, task execution happens and that's how the entire operation uh, execution of the spark query happens now based on this execution plan dynamic partition pruning can be applied both at the logical plan phase and at the physical plan phase uh, we'll see further in the video that it is <coughs> all the more effective to apply the uh, the dynamic partition pruning at the physical plan level that will be much more effective but dynamic partition pruning uh, comes into play both at the logical plan level and also at the physical plan phase now let's look at this particular join again this is our query where we're trying to join the two table one obviously is the dimension table which comparatively is smaller and another one is the fact table which is the bigger table or the large table and as we understood based on the static partition pruning the filter will only come on the one side of the query now we are trying to apply the dynamic partition pruning at the logical plan phase the spark 3 will try to do that and with this we do not need to scan the full table uh, the full fact table as well and for this uh, we have taken a simple approach to implement DPP is to create a sub query of the filter which is applied on the smaller dimension table and dynamically place it on the fact side of the table before even the table scan has happened so the same filter which we had here we have moved it on dynamically on the fact side as well so that we apply the same filtering on the fact table before even the scan happens and then that filter data from the both side goes for the join so this way we will be able to minimize the amount of data going for a join and thus will 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 uh, achieve a substantial amount of uh, query optimization so this is how dynamic partition pruning is applied on the on the logical plan itself however 
uh, there are a couple of downsides uh, to this particular approach of DPP. One is the subquery duplication that we need to do on the fact table is, is expensive and it becomes more expensive if we do not had, have the right kind of heuristics and the stats available to kind of uh, find out what is to dynamically kind of find out what is that filter condition that we can apply on the fact table. So this makes a potential case that uh, it will be more efficient to if we apply the similar stuff at the physical plan. So let's see how we can apply the dynamic partition pruning at the physical plan level. Uh, let's quickly try to understand that if we have say uh, if we have a scenario of a join where one table is uh, is a dimension table which is substantially smaller so our broadcast hash, hash join will come into the picture right and how this broadcast join is executed it would have two uh, sites your build side and the prop side uh, build side uh, will take into account your smaller table which is your dimension table and then apply uh, the predicate push down of the filter and a hash table would be created uh, as the build site and then then and post that uh, once the build site is executed the outcome of that particular uh, dimension table post applying the filter would be broadcasted across all the workers that are required to be involved in that particular computation of a join then a probe site would be created where we'll assert all the rows from the fact table to this broadcast variable. If you try to understand this whole mechanism of broadcast has joined, it has kind of two phase, it's split into two stages. One is the build stage and second one is the probe stage. So there is a natural barrier, a stage barrier is available in the broadcast has joined. And this natural barrier gives us a handle and we can ha leverage that handle to uh, insert the concept of dynamic partition pruning. What we can do here is we can intercept the results of uh, the build site which would be available in the broadcast variable which would be exchanged and sent across to all the nodes in the cluster and then we can take that uh, broadcast uh, the filter conditions of the build side and dynamically apply the same filter condition on the fact table on the large table even before the file scan has happened so we can dynamically plug them as the dynamic filter on the fact side so what this will eventually help us is it will help us to kind of uh, uh, make the data available uh, only which is required based on that filter condition to go further for a join so anything which doesn't meet the filter criteria would not go unnecessary for uh, further for the join. So if you see this approach, this becomes very effective because here we are not relying on the stats and the heuristics. The only thing we are doing is we are taking the filter condition which is applied on the build site or in the form of uh, broadcast uh, exchange that is created and the same is applied dynamically on the fact side. So guys, this is how a dynamic partition pruning is applied at the physical level. And obviously this is much more effective uh, because we exactly have asserted the filter conditions uh, on the broadcast side, on the build side, and the same has been applied on the probe side as well, right? So what we have seen in this particular video and how dynamic partition pruning is, is uh, uh, available in Spark 3 is first of all the dynamic partition pruning will come into play in both the phases at the logical plan phases where we can uh, dynamically generate some kind of a subquery uh, based on the filter conditions and apply it dynamically on the fact side on the large table side uh, dynamic partition pruning will also come come into play at the physical plan where we can take the build side condition of the broadcast exchange and dynamically apply it on the fact side and reduce the overall amount of data going further for the joints and this twofold approach taken for the dynamic partition pruning uh, helps us significantly speed up the whole scenario of spark sql query execution so guys this is this is a very important concept and traditionally if we see uh, in, in typical warehouse 
uh, scenarios or a business inside kind of scenarios you would always have the very large tables as fact tables and even if you have the star schema uh, you can't get away from getting into the conditions of joining it with different dimensions so in that scenario dynamic partition pruning can make the entire query performance very very effective so guys that's it in this particular video keep learning have a good day ahead bye bye